Greetings, brothers and sisters. So, I wanted to remind everybody, because I'm going to cover Nancy today, a bizarre press conference that she gave, that if Jojo Magoo doesn't make it, which, you know, the odds are pretty high, in terms of making it to the end of his presidency, you have Kamala Harris, who they've just hidden away because she's so awful. Like, you don't even hear about her. They rolled out that one kid video where she was talking about um, space camp, and she was trying to, you know, she was so horrible with the kids. I mean, just, she's so unlikable. So they're hiding her away so people might forget how much they dislike her, right? Because, you know, she's the first in line. And then there's Nancy. Um, this guy, Patrick Leahy, is another ancient, he's 81 years old, right? Nancy Pelosi is 81 years old, Diane Feinstein, 80 years, 81 years old, right? So the 80s, they're in their 80s, these guys. Nancy's older than even Jojo Magoo. And Anthony Blinken is a nightmare that we saw uh, that was in charge of the Afghanistan uh, withdrawal, the debacle in Afghanistan. And so before we get to Nancy... So this is Jojo Magoo's press conference. I haven't watched this video yet. I just watched part of it at the end. So let me just find a random spot here to to um so I you know I haven't watched this whole thing. So let me just find a random spot here. And let's listen to Jojo just randomly at a press conference. Be able to have changed the number of very conservative folks who turned out in the red districts who were Trump voters, but maybe, maybe. No, I, I, I know we did, but I, we also, I was running against Donald Trump. <laughs> Donald Trump? Who is this Donald Trump you speak of? What should Democrats possibly do differently to avoid similar losses in November, especially as Republicans are now successfully running on culture war issues and false claims about critical race theory? Well, I think we should produce for the American people. Look, one of the things that is important... So she was, she, he was asked about critical race theory. First of all, this is the guy who had a no malarkey. <laughs> he was driving around the country in a bus that said no malarkey on it. No malarkey was a saying my grandparents used to use, right? You know, it was like even older than... You know, my dad's generation, my dad's died at 90 years old, so he was older than JoJo. So JoJo was not, you know, he was supposed to appeal to the youth, right? The Democrats were going after the youth vote. He was driving around the country in a no malarkey, doing a no malarkey tour. And he was just, um, you know, breaking down, calling that, he called that guy fat and challenged people to push-up contests and IQ tests and like he was losing it. He, he got angry a bunch of times. Get off my lawn, right? And just babbling. Nobody was interested in him. His campaign was dying. And he went into South Carolina and Clyborne said, all right, you know, we're going to make you win this thing in South Carolina. He got out to vote for JoJo. But he said, you got to fix your campaign, right? And they brought in new people and they, you know, worked out a strategy with the media, right? But he knows nothing about being a successful candidate. He's caught plagiarizing and lying. And so they're asking him what he needs to do, what the Democrats need to do to appeal to America. And he has no clue, right? Like, this is your president. Important to understand, if, uh, if they pass my legislation, we're going to be able to reduce the price. People are going to see a reduction in the price of the drugs they, they have to get because Medicare will be able to negotiate and lower the price of drugs. So he was asked how he can fix his campaign and about critical race theory. And he says he wants to negotiate with the pharmaceutical companies, right? If they pass my legislation, you're going to see that nobody, and some of you who have children in, uh, in, in daycare or children in child care, you're paying up to $14,000 a year if you live here. You will never have to pay that much money if you live in Washington or wherever you live. No more than 7% of your income. They're going to see that, uh, you know, uh, they'll get tax. So the people who are running the daycare are supposed to eat that or they're going to get subsidies. At a time where there's hyperinflation, his, um, his policies are just to print your way out of it, right? When you print more money, inflation goes up. And he wants to print more money and do bailouts. All right, so we know JoJo sucks. Like, I could... 
go through this whole thing. But this is about Nancy. So this is the so this is the person, Fire Marshal Shill. She looks horrible. I mean, she's you know, she's um, like her eyebrows are like frozen in place, and you know, she's I mean, she's Fire Marshal Shill in it, and she gave a press conference. And I think she might even be worse than JoJo in terms of her deterioration. It will be very positive. You can't deny that it would be very positive. Do you think, do you think Democrats were penalized for having not gotten these things done? I, again, I haven't seen that, uh, and, and all of the analysis. And I know from my own experience that, uh, uh, as I've said to you before, the plural of anecdote is not data. Let's she's always had a very nervous element to her speech. When she's talking, she seems to be like almost like a scared little rodent, right? You know? A little bit hyper, a little bit, you know, un, uh, self-conscious, a little bit unsure. And now she's just old, right? As you get older, everything gets worse. You deteriorate. You know, your, your mind doesn't work as well. And you're, I mean, you break down. That happens to everybody. It's happening to me, you know. <laughs> you're not able to be what you once were. And what, what she once was, what she once was sucks, right? Same thing with JoJo. It wasn't like they were good in their prime. You know? <laughs> it wasn't like they were rocking it in their prime. She just happened to stick around long enough that she gained power. She's in a Republican, uh, she's in a Democratic state in, um, in uh, California, and she's not really a threat to, have, uh, to lose an election. So they just stick around people like this. And if they're there long enough, they rise up the ranks, and now she's in a place of power. But she's not elected president. No one would vote for her. People don't like her. She has, like, really bad approval ratings. And yet she's third in line to be the president. And she's, you know, just as broken down as he is. Let's see what the data is as it comes out. But there's no question. If we, uh, the more results we can produce in a way that is, people understand in their lives, the better it is. Uh, I'm heartbroken because Terry... McCullough is a great leader in our country and really <laughs> was a great governor of, of Virginia. And I'd hope that he was a once and future governor. But also, uh, we were all interested in down ballot races as well. So I haven't seen much of that. Um, you lost. You lost big time. New Jersey, a nice victory. I spoke to the governor this morning to congratulate. Not a nice victory. You know, you squeaked by. <laughs> him and again we'll be working together to build back better uh, tap those again tap those papers to build back better but without saying what impact it had it's always a positive message to have results uh, that are understood by the public yeah. yeah the public knows we have inflation and you want to print more money you only uh, could you just project this week a little bit what you expect you expect to vote tonight and is it possible the fake smile and just the crazy look right well that you might just vote on the infrastructure bill considering everybody seems to be bought in and saying it's ready for a vote no okay so let's <laughs> vote for that. Do you, do you wow whoa <laughs> what was that nancy let's watch that again and saying it's ready for a vote no Okay, so look at her crazy eyes as she's laughing. What the? <laughs> Nancy, what's up, bro? Build back better today, and what are the big hurdles you have to overcome? I'll let you know as soon as I wish to. I'll let you know as soon as I wish to. <laughs> I'll let you know as soon as I wish to. But we, we're I'll let you know as soon as I wish to. <laughs> yeah, slave, what I want to tell you know how I'm going to screw you over, I'll tell you. <laughs> okay, you're just worried about your own schedule. I know, I know that. <laughs> but the fact is, is that I remember... I, I don't think I've ever heard that laugh before. Maybe I have, but whoa. That's where it's in Kamala's. Members are engaged in very thoughtful deliberation with each other. Uh, nine as Just look at her face like she's confused. Her eyes are lost. Her eyebrows are frozen in place. I mean, she's got, this is the only part of her face that really moves. 
everything's locked up like it's been completely Botoxed, you know, and I mean, just her affect and her spiritual condition and the energy that she's exuding. As I said to you before, 90% of this bill has been agreed to House, Senate, White House, and written. We made some changes since last week. People need to uh, familiarize themselves with it. That was the purpose of our meeting this morning. As I said, it made me very proud and was inspired by just once again hearing the depth of knowledge and breadth of vision. The depth of knowledge and the breadth of vision. Uh, ...of our colleagues, and uh, uh, we'll let you know, but we... we just study her face here. Like, what's moving in her face? I think many of you know I was really very unhappy about not passing the BIF last week. I, I really was very unhappy because we had an October 31st deadline. and I Halloween and, you know, witches got to get what witches need. I thought that that was eloquent, but not enough. Yeah, exactly. Eloquent to have it on Halloween when you're, you know. <laughs> I guess. So now we're going to... We're going to pass both bills, but in order to do so, we have to have votes for both bills, and that's where we are. Wait, you don't have the votes? Thank you, Madam Speaker. You just mentioned that you don't want members to vote on something that may not have a good prospect when it goes over to the Senate. When it comes down to paid family leave, which is now included in this bill, Senator Joe Manchin believes that it shouldn't be in this bill. Yeah. Do you believe that the president can convince him otherwise? And what's your message to Senator Manchin on why it deserves to be in this bill? Well, I don't make it a habit of talking to Senator, to Senator Manchin on the TV. Uh, we're friends. I respect him. He's a good person. He's agreed to so much that is in the bill. Universal pre-K and child care agreed to uh, the... Uh, Look at her work her hands here. Look at her affordable work her care hands. act expanded to embrace those who are left out of the Medicaid, especially our seniors who depend on that for... Uh, for a long-term care. He's been supportive of the child tax credit. There's so many things, home health care and the rest. Uh, some of the stuff in green, we're not finished with that yet, but we've had some areas of agreement there. So, But the fact is there's one difference between uh, affordable the some of these issues, like hearing. It's not for hearing in the bill. Hearing has a very broad universal support in our caucus. In terms of uh, family medical leave, that has big broad, it's no sacrifice for anybody to vote for something that might not see the light of day. And these, we hope, will see the light of day. Uh, there, we can afford it. Uh, it's universal. It's compromise. Four weeks, I'd rather have it longer. I want it six weeks because that's when little babies. She's just gone. Can finally be able to go to child care but nonetheless four weeks so you know there should be family leave that should be um you know all these other countries when you have a baby you get time off like it's it should be a a thing in america it's a horrible thing you know going back to you know when my kids were born i mean it's just um america expects you to go right back to work even the mother and so um like some of these things i agree with but like she's just so much she's so ghouled out here so my message to, not Joe Manchin, I mean, we talk enough, he knows what my message is, but uh, with all the respect in the world for the point of view he represents, I disagree. I think that this is appropriate for this legislation. It fits very comfortably with child care. This could be your president. Like, this could be your president out there. And JoJo has lowered the bar so much, right, <laughs> in terms of mental competence health care, home care, family and medical leave, and it has the full support of our caucus. There are other issues that, um, for example, registry, which may or may not, people will be willing to vote for it if there's a real prospect for success in the Senate, and we'll have to see what that is. So we, we have reserved the right to make distinctions among them. And just to respond to some moderates who have said maybe they need more time to review this legislation. Well, you know, the, 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 this has been up for, well, first of all, this is the bill. Basically, we had three and a half trillion dollars. And then we had to cut it in half, so that was drastic. And that's what was posted last week. Now we have. Where's, you know, that's the amount of tax revenue that's in a year. Like the yearly tax revenues for America, corporate tax. You know, American people tax, right? All these things is, is usually three, you know, three and a half 
a trillion. It might go up to four this year. And they're going to spend that. They've just spent that in other bailouts. And Trump had a bailout. So they're at $12 trillion in post-COVID bailouts because there was an economic collapse in 2009, which in 2014, I asked God, when was, you know, there was going to be a period of time where they couldn't hide, they couldn't fudge the books to, you know, keep things going. Like, it's just the system has an economically collapsed years and years ago. I don't know when it was, but we became insolvent where we could never, you know, when you're insolvent, it's where your liabilities, your debts are so great that you could never pay them off. There's no way to get out of it. You can go bankrupt, but America can't go bankrupt in the sense of, you know, it's the central point of the world economy. So there's going to be a period of time where America and Americans, you know, in the world was going to have to face that we were insolvent. They couldn't hide it anymore. And I asked, you know, God when that was going to be, and the answer came back 2019. And 2019 came and went. And, you know, I made a video about, you know, the economic collapse of 2019. But then they did this COVID thing, which clearly was economically motivated, right? (laughs) And now they're just pushing an agenda. They're looting what's left of American wealth. Everyone's getting a piece of the pie, and they're all putting that money into hard assets and other things. They're going to move towards cryptocurrency in some way or another. Digital currency, you know, chipping everybody. I mean, all these things, Agenda 21. And that's where they are, right? And there's no money. Like, there's no, you know, they're just um, trying to milk as much out of the American economy for themselves and their friends. I said this. If it was Trump president, it would be the same thing. Whoever was president was going to be in charge of the going out of business sale of America. We asked for public comment, and we had public comment. You act upon the comment, and that is what they... This would ordinarily be a situation... More on the subject you ever want to know. and She loses her train of thought. She doesn't complete sentences. She doesn't make things clear. She slurs her speech. Reject it as soon as these bills are passed because it will not be useful in your life for the future. On reconciliation, you really can't do an expansive manager's amendment. Normally, regular order, we passed bill last, we put the bill out last week. There are changes, manager's amendment, pass it on. Reconciliation, you have It's like she just got drunk in the middle of the press conference. You have to have it embraced in a the totality of an another amendment, but it's really that it contains it all so that it adds up because it that's what reconciliation Yeah, but it doesn't add up, Nancy. Like what you're saying, you've lost your audience. Nobody's following you. <laughs> you're just gone. Just like Jojo Magoo before her. They have their senior moments, right? And for a time when this is supposed to be a youth movement, we have pre-boomers. These guys are even like really kind of before the boomer generation. Boomers and early boomers and pre-boomers who are running the country. You know, these hippies who are, you know, uh, suffering the the effects of um, 1960s drug use, right? (laughs) The post effects. And so when people are saying, well, this is a whole new bill. No, it isn't. But it, if you imagined it as a, rec, a manager's amendment, it might be easier to grasp because you're just seeing the differences. No, it's not easier to grasp. Nobody's grasped. You've lost, like, nobody knows what you're talking about. They have to go rewatch this and try to pull out some meaning to your babbling words, right? And that's what members presented today. So again... No matter the amendment with reconciliation that is substantive, therefore you have to... Yeah, there you go. Do that again. Let's just do that like I'll edit this so we watch her do this <laughs> over and over with her hands. See, I'll just uh, go back here a second. And we'll get that later. Princes, and that's what members presented today. So again, no matter the amendment with reconciliation that is substantive, therefore you have to cloak it or couch it in a similar, this is called amendment, last week was called an amendment as well. An amendment in the nature of a substitute. Is that going to serve you well in your life? Are you concerned that the parliamentarian's past as an immigration prosecutor inhibits her ability to, you know, produce an impartial 
judgment on immigrant relief proposals? I, I mean, the judgment about the parliamentarian is one for the Senate. Uh, for the Senate. I, mean, I just uh, don't agree with the original uh, uh, that, that, that the policy outweighed the budgetary aspects of the bill. Uh, but she's the parliamentarian. You have to talk to the Senate about judgments about their, their people. Madam yes, sir. Madam Madam you, your leadership took a whip count. Uh, the deadline was about a half hour ago. I'm sorry? Uh, your leadership took a whip count of yeah. your members on the Build Back Better Act. The deadline for that was about an hour, a half hour ago. Uh, are there Democrats still saying that they're not going to vote for this? Do you have the votes to pass this by the end of the week? Well, you were my priority. I didn't. I came right from the caucus to this <laughs> meeting, so I, I'm not familiar. <laughs> yeah, he's a rodent. Familiar with what that is, uh, but uh, again, we have questions that members have, uh, whether it's about is it really paid for. That was one of the questions. Yesterday we had. She just did like a beauty queen, you know, um, prom queen wave here. Let's see. Watch your hand right here. Uh, whether it's about, is it really paid for? That was one of the questions. Yesterday we had a session where we listened to them and they want to know, is it really paid for and how? We so this is how Nancy sign language is listening. Watch her movement here. Like her hands are amazing. Like she's, I don't know if she's legitimately Italian, but. Yesterday we had a session where we listened to them and they want to know, to is it ears. really paid for and how? We had this morning uh, Richie Neal uh, and uh, Brian Deese from the White House talk about how it was and with the idea. That was early. Uh, that it, at 10 o'clock, the Joint Tax Committee would be, that, that would be released. Have you seen it? You no, we haven't seen it. We don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Seen it. Okay, so that was one piece. The other piece was about inflation, and we had the uh, experts' opinions and, in fact, a very recent today from uh, Moody's uh, that it, the bill was paid, it was, since it is paid for, it would not uh, increase. You know, you're supposed to learn to art articulate your points. Like, I can see that she's got ideas. She's talking about the Moody's rating here. And if you really sat through this and, you you know, you learn to, like, uh, speak ghoul, you know, aging, dilapidated ghoul, you would, you know, be able to gain something and figure out what she's trying to say. But that's not the way it's supposed to work. You're supposed to be able to talk to people, not just, you know, policy wonks and political insiders, but the American people. The American people, there's no way they're going to understand her, right? I mean, the average person, you know, there she's just, you know, babbling. She's inconsistent. She's throwing her hands around all over the place, trying to, you know, make sense of it. Like he's, she's speaking a foreign language to our audience. Inflation, and in fact, it would add to our economy because of childcare enabling many more women to fully participate uh, in, in it. So I haven't, I haven't seen, I haven't seen. Madam, I don't know, I, I was gonna say, did you see the whip gun? Because I'll tell you something about Mr. Clyburn. He keeps it close to the vest. <laughs> and even as speaker, I say that, on Mr. Clyburn, how are we doing? Every time she laughs, you think she's dying, right? Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, a number of the Virginia Democrats were... Look at her face. I'm so happy to hear from you. Look at her, look at her freaking face. Very critical of the decision not to put the infrastructure bill on the floor before yeah. the election. And they say that contributed to... She's not listening. She's playing with papers and... Terry McCullough's laws. Do you believe the House Democrats... Make it tidy. Make it nice and tidy here, Nancy. In any way, were partially responsible for what happened on Tuesday. Was that, was that a question you asked? It's similar. <laughs> <laughs> what I said was... You're laughing. <laughs> Unbelievable. As any sign of progress is always good for the public when they understand what it is, and I think they understand infrastructure pretty well. So it would have been better if we had. It's not infrastructure. We, I've read the bill. It was published. I mean, I didn't read the whole bill, but, the, you know, a news report about it. And most of the stuff on there isn't really infrastructure. I don't know, because I haven't seen the data. Perhaps you have. I think there were other issues at work in that election, and uh, it remains not for me to make a, a, an observation unsubstantiated by data and science and fact. I'm very scientific about elections, district by district, within the district, region by region, and we'll see what that is. But it was not 
a good night. So let's just not, let, not go away from that. Why not put but that you have to ask them. Uh, if, if that's what they said, that's your story. I'm not going to comment on their story. Why not put that on the floor right now? Thank you. So we have this. Any more women here? So, we so women, go ask some women. We have this uh, number from the Joint Committee on Tax. Yeah. Obviously, you have these blue dog, moderate Democrats who are holding out wanting a CBO school. Mm -hmm. There are differences between those, and they had indicated to me that those two things are not quite the same. Is that enough to bring them across the line, or what has to happen? Those to two get things a, are not quite the same. I mean, a CBO score and a JCT score, and yeah, therefore, is, right. is that going to be enough to get them to vote later tonight, tomorrow? On that word, Let me say that we have been um, all along, Not this is not sequential, like when we get to this point, we'll send this here. All along we've been sending things to CBO. This is not new to them. And same thing with joint tax, and they've come now with our bill, uh, come out and said how much money it will absolutely produce. And that doesn't include over and above the... Um, prescription drug money, which is hundreds of billions of dollars, as well as $400 billion from the um, enforcement. It's like somebody, um, it's like you've gone to a mental institution or a retirement home, and there's a woman walking around thinking she's secretary of the state, right? <laughs> and she's talking, you know, and the interns and the, um, you know, the hospital staff or the, you know, the workers at the at the retirement home, are all humoring her, right? <laughs> she has some fake podium, and she's sitting up there with a broom handle, pretending she's talking into the microphone. The And by the way, considered to be a low figure. Former IRS directors have written and said it could be close to a trillion dollars, but we're counting it low. We have been very conservative in everything, every estimate that we make so that it truly is formidably paid for. Uh, the um, With what? Like your income is $4 trillion, and that's all accounted for. Social Security, Medicaid, all the other governmental programs, and the military-industrial complex, the defense budget. So all the money that we, you know, that the government generates per year in tax revenues already, already paid, you know, the budget's always higher than the income. And then you have the debt and the interest of the debt, which is going to be at $40 trillion. And it's, you know, it's a million dollars. It's $3 million per minute. Like I've counted it off if you've seen some of my videos. And it's going to be worse. It's going to be $5 million a minute and then $10, $10 million a minute, right? And so it's just accruing. And then you're going to add another $4 trillion in bailouts. It just doesn't work economically, right? The CBO also has been... The, the thing about the CBO is they have most of the information, now they have the new information, but they have to correlate it. You know, they have to say... If, it's just like she's at some camp trying to, you know... <laughs> If, if, if you say, well, we had 3.5, now we have 1. Like she's trying to do sign language, but she doesn't know what, she doesn't know sign language. Seven, cut it in half. Or, yeah, cut it in half, she did it. Whatever the number is, cut it in half. That doesn't, it doesn't work. They have to relate it, what the impact is from one area to the next. Takes a little longer, more subjectivity, but we're, we're you know, we're, this shouldn't take long to get. The other thing that we're getting are, we're sending stuff over to the Senate. Well, it's, most of the product that we've done is, except now what we, we may have added in the last day or so, and some of what we added is Senate to the bill, like a hearing. Like you must know, she must know. I mean, they don't watch this back and say, look, they didn't get any of this, right? Like she's just gone. And, you know, the media should be saying, hey, Nancy's, mentally incompetent and so is jojo magoo right what are we going to do about this like that's their job bernie doesn't like hearing excuse me bernie loves hearing <laughs> mention it doesn't want hearing in the bill and all that stuff um so some is senate oriented and then we have the family medical leave we figured if they're putting things in then we can put something in if even if mansion doesn't like it so like how many words you count the words in a sentence like i'm only getting like 
like two or three words per se- per sentence that are intelligent, you know, that you can understand the words, like just words itself. You're trying, just l- searching for like the, let that segment's great. Let's watch that whole thing again, and just um. Uh, <laughs> Last day or so, and some of what we added is Senate to the bill, like a hearing. Bernie doesn't like hearing. Excuse me. Bernie loves hearing. <laughs> Manchin is, doesn't want hearing in the bill and all that stuff. Um, so some is Senate oriented, and then we had the family medical leave. We figured if they're putting things in, then we can put something in, if, even if Manchin doesn't like it. So, um, uh, so we are getting some bird okay. and privilege. I think I think mostly we're getting privilege scrub, because privilege drug is deadly to a bill. Vertical, it's important. It's you have yeah, to, vertical is important, but yeah, it's not privilege scrub. Take it out, but privilege violation can take you out. So so we're again getting that as we go along as well. But when we pass a bill, then they will f- see it in its aggregate and make uh, some. Any concerns that any of this is? messaging because the- all right so that's enough of nancy right like you don't need to see anymore she you know she's leaving out words and using gesticulation to try to fill in the gaps and holes in her you know inability to communicate what she's saying she uses like terms that only political wonks and you know washington dc insiders know what she's talking about right <laughs> and you know and that's she's third in line to be president. So two more things I got to get to here. I want to get to this Pete Davidson, Kanye West, and Kim Kardashian thing. And let's go to Alyssa Milano first here. Alyssa Milano says she thought her two miscarriages were punishment for her two abortions. And uh, let's get rid of that thing. Two abortions she had in her 20s and feared something would happen to her kids as a, former, as a form of karmic resolution. She realized in therapy that she was carrying guilt over the two miscarriages she suffered while she was trying to have children. Some part of her thought it was punishment, and later she worried something might have to have to that something might have to have to happen to, which is say, her kids as karmic resolution. She previously revealed she had two abortions in 1983, and you know it's somebody who I mean all these women that are pro-abortion these Hollywood women are always saying that it was wonderful it's the best thing that ever happened to them they um you know they suffered no guilt or depression and that's you know it comes with depression miscarriages come with depression there just uh, is a you know it's a and not just depression but you know other mental and, and PTSD type things right and this happens when you lose a child it is you know and it's a child, like for especially for a mom, it's inside you. The spirit connects with you, right? The spirit, you know, is there before you um, get pregnant, and then it starts making a baby inside of you. So this is, you know, a natural process where, when that relationship is terminated, it's a very intimate relationship for a woman when she has a baby inside of her, like the soul relationship. And when it's terminated, it's you know horrible. It's a, uh, you know. It's um, it's going to make you feel bad. So let's go to the Kanye West thing. So I wasn't going to comment on this, but I mem- remembered something I want to show you. So Kanye West unfollows Kim Kardashian again amid Pete Davidson rumors. So Kim Kardashian's been seen with Pete Davidson after they met on Saturday Night Live. And Kanye isn't having it. And one of the reasons is... Um, Pete Davidson did this. Last week, last week, Kanye West performed on the show, and afterwards he gave an unplanned speech to the audience in support of Donald Trump. Here with his reaction to Kanye's speech is Pete Davidson. Okay, so what that was is Kanye West performed on Saturday Night Live, and then he just started to go on a rant. And Pete Davidson came out you know, in an interview and said it was like he held us all hostage and he was just sitting there, you know, and how crazy Kanye was. And then they did this sketch about it. But like, I'm crazy, and we both know which side of Kanye is at the wheel right now. <laughs> so he's calling Kanye crazy, right? 
Kanye, who has said that his bipolar diagnosis is his superpower. And we all had to stand behind him. And here's what it looked like. So, like, I'm, like, on the left. I'm, like, oh, God. And then I'm, like, I want a career, so I leave. <laughs> so he walked out when Kanye was talking. And so, um, you know, this is um, <laughs> for Kanye, if you know anything about Kanye, right? He's not forgetting this kind of thing. And he's being called crazy. And now his ex-wife is banging this school. You know, these Hollywood women, like Pete Davidson is, the whole year of the ghoul came from Pete Davidson and Celine Dion. When I looked at Pete Davidson, I said, look at this ghoul, right? I hadn't used the word ghoul in my whole life. I, you know, ghoul wasn't a word that I thought and used. I never called anybody a ghoul. Didn't really know what a ghoul was. And like Pete Davidson, I saw him with his pale skin and his, you know, not funny and just his neurosis and all these things. I went, look at this ghoul, right? I mean, he's like, like a 24-year-old kid. He looks like he's 60. And then he started dating all these celebrity women. And because they're all ghoul lovers, right? <laughs> the other person was Celine Dion. And between, between the two of them, I'm like, hey, there's all these ghouls running around. Like, all of a sudden, I see it. I'm like, I'm a ghoul. Like, I'm already <laughs> like Kanye, I know you're like, yo, this is the real me. I'm off the meds. So this is the part I remember. <laughs> Take him. So this guy, I mean, just look at his eyes like he's a lost person, right? Somebody who is, you know, I mean, probably not all this long for this world, right? He's just somebody who's, um, I mean, you look at his the way he walks around and his body language, you know, and he's, he's talked about his multiple uh, psychological diagnoses, and they're pretty severe, and including, you know, borderline personality and things like this. And so he's saying, take your meds. And the thing about meds, there's uh, an article from Vox, and I looked this up to do with the heartfulness video on suicide. Depression and suicide risk are side effects of more than 200 common drugs. More than one-third of American adults use medications that list depression as a risk, and a quarter use drugs that increase the risk of suicide. So that's one-fourth of Americans are on drugs that have a possible side effect of suicide. And, you know... It said that these guys were on drugs that um, caused depression. So many people that commit suicide are on some sort of pharmaceutical medication that has these symptoms. And here's the list. And I'm aware of this because I worked in treatment centers. And you look at some of these drugs that are here. Um, this, um, you know, some of these drugs I recognize as antipsychotic, or they're for treatment of mental illness or for sleeping antidepressant there's these floor uh, this is a florox these are all um, fluoride based prozac is a fluoride based i believe um type of medication and these have suicidal symptoms right look how long this list trazodone is like a elephant tranquilizer they used to give these to 10 year old kids 14 year old kids between 10 and 14 year old kids in treatment centers i worked in and they couldn't sleep without it it would knock them out right a lot of these things, right? Clozapan, uh, these, um, you know, these, uh, I, you know, I recognize these as pills they used to give to kids in the treatment center. Like most of them took one of these or multiple pills, more than one. They often took like three different types of pills. And they all cause depression and suicidal symptoms. Look at this long list here, right? And so how many people, you know, have committed suicide with this ibuprofen? It's depression. It causes depression. Right? I mean, think about that. How many people are on ibuprofen? And so, I mean, these are just, um, uh, you know, ex exhaustive lists that causes people to feel bad. I know people who are on psychological medications, testosterone, cause depression here, that are on these type, clonid clonidine, I mean, all these things, um, that were on, you know, some sort of psychological medication, antidepressant, and then it's impossible for them to, I mean, it's not, and then when they, you know, the thing stops working, it turns on them. And then, you know, they try to get off of it and withdrawal is a total nightmare. So here's this school pushing these things, right? There's no shame in the, in the medicine game. I'm on them. It's great. 
<laughs> take him. There's nothing wrong with take him. If I ever got on a plane... Well, you know, there's depression and suicidal tendencies. ...and the pilot said, I just want all you to know, this is the real me flying tonight. <laughs> I'd jump out. <laughs> yeah, you would, but I, I would be um, freaked out if the guy said, yeah, I'm on... Um, medications that make me feel suicidal and I'm about to fly your plane. Being mentally ill is not an excuse to act like a jackass. Okay? You know, when he, um, like he walked out on a number of shows because he got slightly heckled or somebody, um, somebody uh, asked him a question, like the manager of the club, and he walked out on stage. I showed these videos before. I'm not going to cover it here. But he walked on stage and left. These people were waiting to see him at a comedy club, but some guy pissed him off backstage and he took it out on the audience, right? He had audience members kicked out who, you know, said things to him, you know, talked about um, that guy, uh, Mac Miller, right? Somebody yelled Mac Miller at a show and he kicked him out. So, you know, you've been acting like a jackass for years and you've been whining about your mental illness. Uh, but no, seriously, one time I stopped taking my meds and I bit my mom. <laughs> No, it's all good. I bought her a house. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so this is, um, you know, Kanye's reality, right? Kanye, who thinks his um, manic depression is uh, his superpower, and his wife now is banging this school who's all, you know, into medications. <laughs> so Kanye unfriended her or unfollowed her on Instagool. <laughs> the thing about it is, you know, I first recognized, like I said, there was uh, 2000, whatever was it 2019 was the year of the ghoul <laughs> and i was like wow there are ghouls everywhere you see about cnn you know here with nancy i mean this is a this video is full of a ghoul fest right jojo magoo nancy Alyssa milano these walking cadavers that are like dead inside and they're just sucking the life out of everybody and they're being celebrated they're at the top of the, this is like they live you know where you're you, know, you wear these special glasses and you can see all the ghouls and you know it's not cool. <laughs> I mean, the ghouls are just walking around. It's like, you know, yeah, ghouls are running our world right now. Anyways, that's why we say only spirituality will save this world. It's Paul Romano, definitely important for the apocalypse and the ascension. Everyone have a blessed day and be grateful.